Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, what grabbed her wrist in the middle of the night? She couldn't see it, but her cat definitely knew it was there. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That it is 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories with us. Of course, you can also write in at uh, realghoststoriesonline.com. And if you want an ad-free experience, check that out. You can get that uh, over at Apple Podcasts or patreon.com slash realghoststories. Uh, Tony Bruski, Carol Hughes with you on today's episode of the program. I am i don't know how I got to this website that I'm looking at here right now. I think it was something to do with one of our last stories. Oh, no, it was because I was putting a graphic together for uh, a feature I'm doing about BTK. Over well, on that's always that's always over on uh, to do. over on uh, the Hidden Killers podcast. But um, I I was just doing a graphic image search for a mugshot, and then this came up: BTK action figure. No, it's the toy company called Straight to Hell, and they have all sorts of uh, they. <laughs> Oh my goodness, they have like toys of all right different now. people. It's straight to hell toyco.com. I'm not they're not advertising, but oh my god. Uh they have all sorts of uh they have Charles Manson, uh Susan Atkins, uh, Tex Watson action uh, action oh, figures, god. Jim Jones action figures, <laughs> Marshall Applewhite. Uh wow. There you go. That's what happens when you have way too much time on your hands. You create serial killer toys. They go from anywhere from $27 to 51 it looks like. Well, and I think maybe because living where he was from, like probably where he lived, I might live five miles away mm-hmm. from there. Would you like one of these for Christmas? No, no. BTK action figure? No. Like that, I would, like it, seriously, if somebody gave me one, I would throw it out. Like the Unabomber. Is so it is. I mean, it really is. There's a Timothy McVeigh action figure. Like what? No. This is absolutely horrible. I mean, they all look like the same basic design. It looks like they kind of paint on the faces. I don't know. Um, again, someone has too much time on their hands. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories. With us, let's go to one of those right now. Hi, let's hear a ghost Hi, story. Hi, my name is Dorothy Byron, and my story involved growing up in a haunted house uh, in Chicago, Illinois, on the south side. Uh, I was 13 years old, and we lived in a two-bedroom townhouse. And it was a very hot summer night, and it was a three-bedroom unit, and we were at the end. We lived in the heart of the city. It was not uh, very busy because it was 1230 at night. And at the time, we did not have central air or window air conditioners. And the house that we lived in, we were the second occupants of the home. It was, I was an only child. It was my mom and dad and I. And my mom and dad said, let us sleep in your bedroom tonight because we had uh, two. I had two bedroom windows in my bedroom, one over the bed and one uh, at the uh, head of the bed. And so I said, okay. And mom and dad uh, were sleeping in my room. Of course, we had the windows open. And the house had did strange things already. Um, we moved in when I was 11 years old. So we had been in the house for two years. And... Uh, my dad was a firm believer that there was always a logical explanation for something. 
uh, my mom and I would just look at him and shrug it off because we knew there was something going on in the house. And we had long periods living in that house where nothing would happen. And then all of a sudden the house would act up. Things would disappear. We'd hear footsteps when we were downstairs and there was no one upstairs. Um, and again, my dad would shrug it off going, there's something going on. It's wind or something like that. And at the time, uh, we had one fat calico cat that did nothing but sleep and eat. And she hated my dad, which was kind of funny. But anyway, um, so that night I was laying on my stomach and my head was facing, uh, I was laying on my left side and my head was facing the wall. Uh, and there was a window um, on the left wall, and there was a window literally on the side of the bed, on the right side of the bed. And um, my cat, Biddy was her name, Miss Biddy. She was, a, again, a big fat calico that did nothing but sleep and eat. And she always slept with me. And I felt her walking to the bottom of the bed, and it was so hot and humid in Chicago in the summer. And all of a sudden, I, she got by my knees, and I heard her start to hiss and spit that, like cats do when they were frightened. And Biddy didn't put much energy into anything of it in eating again and sleeping. And I, I didn't turn much of my body, but I did say, Biddy, what's wrong? And she started to howl. And by that time, I turned and looked, and I saw my cat um, fur straight up howling and, and yowling ah, like that. And as I started to literally sit up, something grabbed my arm, my left arm, by my wrist, and I could feel the impression of a hand. Uh, and it was very cold, and I felt five fingers encircle my wrist but yet there was no flesh but I felt a very cold impression of a hand and um, the cat was going nuts and at the same time as something was grabbing my wrist the cat was going crazy the mattress not the entire bed not the house um, the but the mattress was shaking where I was going, Biddy, what's wrong? Because I, the bed was being shaken. And the cat in doing her howling, her howling was being ah, like that. And of course I scream, ah! and my mom comes running. And the cat, when my mom my dad made it to the bedroom doorway, um, my mom switched on the light and I flipped over and, and hit the bed, the lamp that was on the nightstand. And the cat, we all stared at the cat, and that cat looked like a cartoon. That um, the, something out of an old fashioned cartoon with all the fur standing up, the tail was standing up, her back was arched. I was screaming, and my mom and dad were looking like, what, What's wrong? What's wrong? And the light comes on. This was all in within a matter of, it seemed like an eternity, but I realized later it was under a minute. And so the cat jumps off the bed. I'm screaming. My mom is yelling. My dad is yelling. That cat in that tiny house disappeared. We couldn't find her that night. She appeared the next morning. She was not an outdoor cat. Mom and dad didn't want that. She was a total indoor cat. And... I, of course, was hysterical. I tell my mom what happened. My mom believed me, thank God. But my mom also grew up in a family with a, a bunch of sisters and brothers. She was seven out of nine kids who believed in what we now call the paranormal. And um, she had things happen to her. But anyway, um, I said, Mom, I'm never sleeping. Mom and I'm never sleeping in this room again. And um, whatever had come into the room, I said to her later, they came to see you, Mom, not me, but you. And true to my word, I never slept in that room ever, ever again. And that's my ghost story. I have many more, but I wanted to share 
I hope maybe one day uh, I, I might hear it on the show. Uh, again, my name is Dorothy Byron, B-I-R-O-N. All right. Thank you, Dorothy, for that uh, that story. Uh, yeah, my goodness. Uh, that would be uh, kind of creepy and horrifying. And mom and dad like, ah, it's the wind. You know, it happens. <laughs> As parents, that's what they're obligated to do, I think. Yeah. Yeah, you're just hearing things. If my cats did that, I would freak out. Yeah? My cat, yeah, because my cats never act like that. Most cats don't. Like, in the middle of the night, they might jump up on the bed and go, meow, like that. Mm -hmm. That might be all you ever hear. But if they were, like, hissing and spitting and, you know, that whole cat thing with their hair standing up, that would be really weird. And then you have something grab your wrist. Mm Mm-hmm. I think it was interesting at the very end, though, she said something to the effect of, like, they were after you, Mom. Yeah, like, not me. I wonder what that was all about. I don't Why know. she thought it was supposed that they were supposed to be getting her mom. I don't know. That, that part I didn't get. It was kind of a weird little twist there. But, uh, yeah. Maybe her mom was evil. Maybe her mom worshipped Satan and it was like... Maybe the cats were playing with a Ouija board underneath the bed. Mm. Cat Ouija. You got to think of all possibilities, cats cats and their Ouija boards. You know, it gets, it gets, uh, it gets kind of weird sometimes. They do what they do. Have have you ever seen a cat Ouija board? It's like paws, paw marks all over, (laughs) not letters. It's weird. It's very weird. It's like a mouse body that moves around and they, yeah. Anyway, uh, press subscribe wherever you download podcasts. You don't miss any of our episodes. Get uh, bonus material, Apple Podcasts, or Patreon.com slash Real Ghost Stories. Until next time, for Carol and Tony, thanks for listening to Real Ghost Stories Online.